news for you today. I'm going to shake you up. Okay, we've had a lot of shaking going on in the islands, and there's a reason for it. I've got wonderful guests here today, prophets, pastors, evangelists, all kinds of good people, and I'm going to let them show their heart through show and tell to you a little bit today. But I have a prophecy that I want to give to you that was given to me back in 93. And the Lord said he is saying that he will assemble the people around you. You are a people person. And the Lord is saying that you're not the type of person that is to be isolated and set off and misunderstood. So there's a complete change coming. He's saying the change is coming to the islands and you will partake in a revival, a power move in the spirit. And he will send you and combine you with a people of like heart and understanding. And you will be submitted to one another in love. And you will not be submitted to, you will be submitted to one another in love. These men and women will take interest in you and they will be co-laborers with you. And through the joining of their ministries and arms with yours interlocking, you guys will take a hop in the spirit and you'll come into a new anointing, a new purpose, a new ministry will be founded out of this. And he says that the fruit will remain because it will be born of the spirit. And for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, it will shake the land. It will bring about a cleansing because this island, he said that island because this was spoken in Iowa and he had never been to the Hawaiian Islands, but he was giving me a prophetic word. It will bring, bring about a cleansing because that island is crawling with all kinds of demonic entities, animals and beasts and creepy crawling things. And by the spirit of intercession, prayer that will come to the island, the Lord will send the intercessors. They will be forced up into the air. It means all of that stuff, those demonic spirits that are around hovering over us that Joel Austin's father saw when he was here and he went up and God took him up into the heavens one day instead of having R&R &R, like going out into the beach and resting. And he showed him the islands down here that there was many demonic spirits and entities and things that were holding the church back. And then he saw revival. And he said that he saw like palm leaves like this as he looked down from the island from shoreline to shoreline. And he saw like palms waving. He said, what is that, Lord? He said, those are my people in the islands praising me and waving hands for every man, woman, and boy and girl is going to know who God is in these islands. And Cindy Jacob said, this will be the first state who will be all Christian. And I believe that because I'm a prophetess. And I believe that God wants every man, woman, boy, and girl to know of his love. And he said, they will be forced up in the air and that will allow the breathing room for the church to come and manifest as she should and display herself as she should. That means the bride of Christ. And I see a central core of people coming together and branching out and establishing works through the islands. In fact, God will show the islands signs of shaking in the natural. That's what's going to be shaking in the natural because that's what's happening. What, what is happening in the natural then will happen in the spiritual. The islands will someday be known for the power of deliverance and healing. It's going to be a deliverance healing center because the nations pass through there and God will catch them on their way. And that is his heart and intent. He has put that in your heart and there will be an increase in your ministry of all things of deliverance, of healing, and the workings of miracles, and a gift of faith, and those things that you have desired. And your words will not fall to the ground as they have in the past. This transformation is upon you. I thought it was quite interesting that he said signs of shaking. And I wondered how 10 years ago, it was 93, I, more than that, we're really gonna have signs of shaking all oh, really. That happens in California where I used to live, but not here. But we've had great signs of shaking. In 1994, I was with three churches meeting in a high school and the Spirit of God came upon the prophets, and I was one of them. And this is the word of the Lord that came 
from my mouth to three churches who had come together to kind of make peace with one another. I don't know what it was. We were praying together for forgiveness, for love, that God would bring his people together. And it was a wonderful time. And these are the prophetic words spoken out loudly with strength to the body. And I'm going to give them to you now because I think they're apropos. They're timely, in other words. For surely the spirit of the Lord shall begin to shake all that can be shaken. And yea, those things that have held you in bondage for many, many years, he shall shake you loose from. You shall be as free, set free from every bondage that held you in the past. And everything that tries to latch onto you of the world, you shall be unlatched from. Unlatched is a St. James biblical Bible word, as I remember, because I was teethed on the St. On the early speaking, anyway, thee and thou. You shall be as free from every bondage that held you in the past and everything that tries to latch onto you of the world, you shall be unlatched from. That means there's a great shaking going on in all of the Christians' lives. He's shaking us down right now to what is his priority in our life. You shall be released from them so that your mind, your soul, and your spirit can pre be prepared for the things that God has ahead for you. Yea, you shall drop all these weights that hold you back from running the race. Yea, you shall run the race of the Lord. You shall be swift, for the Spirit of God shall anoint these islands as never before. A mighty wind shall come up over these islands, and a wave of his revival will sweep in over his people, and yea, you will bathe in that wave. You will revive yourself in that wave. You will revel in that wave. You will enjoy it. Why? Because Jesus will become Lord in these islands. And we're going to see the hurts and the poverty and the sickness and the homeless being helped. God is going to do a great work in these islands. You will bathe in the blood of Jesus as you have never bathed in his blood before. Now, I know that sounds really weird. We always receive the blood of Christ, you know. But to bathe in it means that he's going to purify us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. We're going to have his mercy, the blood of Jesus that gives every man and woman a chance, a merciful Lord. He's going to bathe us. You will hear him as you never heard his voice before. You're going to hear the voice of the Lord speaking to your heart, whether you've known God or not known God. You're going to hear him for sure. You will know the living God and the people of this island will know that God lives. There will not be one soul that will not hear the revelation of the Lord in these islands and in all of these islands, not just one. Would I wash a wave over one island and not another? But I shall cleanse. Now this is the Lord speaking, remember. This isn't Phyllis speaking. This is the Lord speaking through me to the people. But I shall cleanse the islands of the demonic spirits and those things that hover over and cover open, cover over, shall break open. And the Spirit of, the, of God shall come down and the presence of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy. And you will see God deliver people out of their sins quickly. Therefore, beloved, prepare thyself even this day as the bride prepares herself for the wedding day clean up the garment, take out the spot, iron out the wrinkles. I've got spots. It's more like take out the spots and iron out the wrinkles. Give your garments to the Lord to make yourself ready. First, give your garments to the Lord to make yourself ready first before you go forth. See, we have to proceed forth in humility and in holiness. It cannot come any other way as servants of the Lord. We want to serve you that way. Ministry means servant. That's all it means. You know, some women say to me, oh, you're a mighty woman of God. I said, no, I'm not a mighty woman of God. I'm only a woman, an ordinary woman that the mighty power of God speaks through. Don't you ever take credit for anything that God does through you. He will not let you touch his glory. For as you humble yourself, he will exalt you. Then you humble yourself again. Then he'll exalt you. Then you've got to humble yourself again. It's a process, beloved. And if we don't humble ourselves, God has ways, all right? So I'd rather humble myself. For surely you shall do a work in the earth, and the Lord will be glorified through you. Now he was saying this to three churches. 
and he shall be magnified through you in all of your work. Keep clean, keep in unity, one heart, one mind, one head, the Lord Jesus Christ. My prayer is that every church, every assembly of the people of God will come together to help out in the needs. You know, we're in deep kinchi in these islands. We've got a lot of problems. We need to put our hearts and our hands together and help one another. And these islands will sing of the glory of God that they once sang of many, many, many years ago. I see it with the ministries happening. I feel revival already here. I know there are thousands and thousands of people going to church every Sunday morning now, to Pastor Wayne Cadera, to Pastor Ralph Moore, to all the little bitty churches, the big churches, it doesn't matter. People are finding God and they're searching for God and they're going to find God in his finest state, his finest. He has his best waiting for you. He has a destiny for you to fulfill. I am more than just a wife and a mother and a career woman and a home and dogs and cats and things. I have a destiny that God has called me to. And I love that work in the Lord. It makes me happy. It makes me fulfilled. Ladies, you want to be fulfilled in Christ. Find out what it is that you love to do for the Lord and then go and do it with all of your heart, your mind and strength. And you gentlemen, you have a destiny too. Be that king and prophet of the household and the priest. You're not the high priest, that's Jesus. But let the priest, be the priest that God has called you to be. Don't shrink away from that. God can give you wisdom how to be the husband and the father that you need to be and the minister of God that you really are, even in the workplace like Ed Savalvo. I say his name wrong, but I love his ministry in the marketplace. We need Christian doctors, lawyers, and in engineers and engine chiefs, I was going to say. Because I've been with a lot of the Indians too, and they just love the Lord. A lot of the chiefs. I have my feather from them. Beloved, I'm going to talk to a prophet. His name is Jose Santana, and he's been sent over to the islands from Rochester somewhere, and he's going to talk out of his heart today to you. And then I have Kent uh, I have my friend Kent Anderson who's been in my home and down in the Prophetic Cafe, which, by the way, Prophetic, Prophetic Cafe is no more. Why am I rushing? Because I want to make sure that you hear from these gentlemen and from our lady singer also. And we have Pastor Cal Shannon too. You all know who he is. And he's going to talk the story, so I've got so much today. You must listen. Open your ears, open your eyes, and look, and open your ears and listen, and hear what the Spirit has to say. Good morning, dear Good morning. prophet. Hi. I always love meeting prophets. I Amen. like to pick their minds and find Hallelujah. out what makes them work. And you know what? I yes. found out it's simplicity. Yes, indeed. His thoughts, God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That's right. And his ways are higher than our ways. So I try to let get up into his thoughts and his ways and shut my own mind off, except to be careful as what I say. My God. And then he speaks, right? Amen. We Amen. hope that our heart is pure and clean and our heart motives are right. That's right. Then God can use us. That's right. So that's, that's the formula of that's a good it. prophet. That's it. Okay, I said my Hallelujah. piece now. Yes. You say, where are you from? What you doing? Why are you here? And what is God saying about these islands? My Lord. Did you agree with what I was saying? A hundred percent I oh, agree. Because God is speaking the same thing to all of us. Yeah. The word of the Lord declared that he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Yeah, say it right into that camera. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord declared that uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So uh, Prophet Philip, uh, Prophet Jose and others are hearing the same thing that God is speaking in the United States of America, Puerto Rico, or Hawaii is the same word. I'm amazed in uh, 1 Corinthians tonight, the word of the Lord declared that I have not seen, uh, no ears have heard, not even enter into the heart of men, the beautiful and wonderful thing that God has prepared. But the, the, the word of the Lord said that God searches all things, the deep things of God. So let's talk about Hawaii for a little bit. Yeah. I sense that in Luke 10, the Lord sent 10 people to go and proclaim the kingdom of God. 
but all 10 gave them legal excuses like we do here today. So the Lord said, let me send 10 others. What and do you I mean believe, legal excuses? Legally, it's like, I'm married, I'm celebrating my honeymoon. I, I can't, my, I've got my business to I run. I got my business to run. My kids are going to college. It's not a proper time. But I believe that the Lord, out of the homeless, out of the prostitute, ex-drug dealers, he will bring diamonds out of there. Yes, I agree. People who will not be ashamed that in season and in other season, that will bring forth the decrease of the Lord to this generation. Yes. There will be people sold out to Christ just because they love Jesus Christ and right. Him crucified. They don't have agenda right. like the other seven. Right. You know, I cannot speak against the prostitutes or the hurting or the homosexual because they hurt mm -hmm. in so many ways. But I can bring an ex-homosexual person come up and let him speak and then let the others judge by what they hear from them. Hallelujah. Because I have no right to speak against anyone. I don't even know what I'm talking about when I talk about it. My Lord. But you bring an ex-prostitute, you let her talk story how Jesus came into her heart. Yes. And people see. My Lord. That's the change. I'm a testifier. You are? Yes. Testify to me. <clears throat> well, years ago, <laughs> I used to um, run around with the prostitute, with the drug dealers. Uh, I was a full-time sinner in Egypt. And after 12, 15 years of this lifestyle, right in there. the Lord, um, somebody invited me to church. And um, a, a guy gave me a word of knowledge that Jesus loved me. And uh, I wanted it to be political correct, and I smiled at the guy, and I said, you don't have a clue of what you're talking because I have been a part, a full-time sinner. And the Holy Spirit entered into my belly, and rivers of living water started flowing out of it. And all of a sudden, all the drugs that I did, all the fornication, all the new cars, the custom-made suits, the Studio 54, all of those things couldn't compare to the peace of Jesus. I have truly have tasted and see of the goodness of the Lord. So my life changed in one second because the love of Jesus. And the Bible said, to whom much has been forgiven, much love. This is me. Right, right. There is not a day that it goes by that I'm not thankful or mindful. Apart from Jesus, I would have been dead and in hell in a basket. But the grace and the mercies of the Lord Jesus the Christ gave me another chance. Yeah. Then gave me a gift to see in the Spirit, to minister to His people, love and compassion. Yeah. Don't do and don'ts. It's all about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Look right into the camera, <coughs> sweetheart. We must really uh, uh, know as believers that just because you're sanctified that we have arrived. No, no, we have not arrived. It's a matter of being a follower and a lover of Jesus. That's why the word said that I have not seen. So our responsibility will be, Lord, reveal those things unto me that I do not see. All ears have not heard, speak of your loving kindness to me that I may tell others and make me a servant, a servant of the body of Christ. And I, I keep seeing uh, people coming out of the beaches People who have been in drug addiction, bound by sin, being mighty prophet, teachers, evangelists, the fivefold, God is going to take the foolish things of Hawaii to confine the wise, for have been many theology, uh, many prophets, and many teachers, and they're all good. I'm not talking against them, but it is coming to a time and a season in Hawaii that God is shifting right. the guard from those right. people. Now, I've been a prophet for 50 years. But they need a new prophet that comes along and said, I was in sin like this, I was in sin like that, but God redeemed me, he changed my whole life, and I'm now nothing but Christ. Yes. I move and have my being in Christ. And then they become living examples, epistles written yes. of God, yes. walking around, talking around. Oh, and they don't uh, skirt around the issue. They come right out. <laughs> I find the new generation, they speak it out. And if you watch television like I don't like to do, they're speaking everything evil on TV nowadays. There's no more shame. It's all out in the open for our children to hear and to see if you don't watch what they're watching, even uh, between the commercials. 
but I believe like you do that God has chosen he's raising up a, an army of young people that are fearless right. they don't care about their reputation and they have a testimony yeah. and they care not you know the testimony the blood of the lamb the, the testimony word of their testimony yes. and they care not for their life even unto death that means they don't have a reputation right. and I love it right. you're saying the truth what else yes. well I also uh, have noticed that it's a time that the people who are in authority to mentor people, to pass the baton to this generation. To mentor. The, yes. Yeah. The Apostle Paul says, you might have many instructors, but you don't have many fathers. What I get out of that is that a father is always looking that his son will do better than his dad. And I believe with all my heart that prophets, teachers, evangelists, the fivefold, you are to reproduce yourself. So if the Lord Jesus will take you home tonight, you will leave a legacy behind you that will speak of the signs and the wonders of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means be a good lawyer. Yes. Be a warrior lawyer my for the God. Lord. Be a good doctor. Be a Christ a Phil doctor be a good everything that God's called you even into the marketplace doesn't mean you have to quit show business either no. be a good show person and show Jesus Christ yes. at his very best coming through your song and your dance or whatever it is the hula has come back and it's holy now yes we took it back That's right. from the devil That's and we've made it holy holy yes. through our lovely Colleen Namura, my Hallelujah. spiritual daughter and she's a prophet too my God. see how God does yes. he takes and he uses anybody yes. who will be willing to just be used of the That's Lord it. by the Spirit. What else have we got to say and well, then we move I, on? I'm just going to quickly say that there's yes. people who has a gift um, and they serve in the other guy. But the reason that they serve in the other guy is because the calling have not been sanctified. And John 4 talks about the Samaritan woman. And this woman was not shy and she ended in bed with five guys. But when she met Jesus on the well, her life was changed because Jesus sanctified the calling and the word of the Lord would say then she go back to the village, minister to the men, but she did not go to bed with the men. Woo. And she told everybody in the whole village, she had the big mouth, she yes. told everybody, like, I have a big mouth, we tell everybody. And then they know who Jesus is, the living water. We want to give you the living water, the deep well of console. That's the water that's down in our little vessel. We want to give you that living water. And I have gentlemen here today, uh, Pastor Cal Shannon, and I have Kit, and they're going to talk story with you too. But first, I've got a lovely lady, Susan, and she's going to play. It's called Esther's Prayer. And ladies, if you know anything about Esther, her prayer is a lot like Mary's was. Let it be done unto me according to thy will, Lord God. Susan? We're living in an exciting time. I believe that God is growing people up in him faster than, than those of us from a previous generation, and I would agree that when we meet people and we see God transform their lives, their giftings immediately are used, and it's exciting. It's exciting. And some years back when I had a, a real crisis in our family and I needed to hear from God, I needed to know that I was praying as Jesus was interceding. I want to be in agreement with what Jesus was interceding. And I spent a lot of time and I spent a few days fasting. And I read the book of Esther. And I saw how that young woman went before the king. But she got favor from him because her heart was sanctified. She had fasted and prayed for three days, and she went before him with expectation. That's how we need to go before the Lord, with expectation, and he will bring people into our lives. We need to minister to them when the Holy Spirit says we definitely need to be praying for them, for our leaders, for the street people, for whoever the Lord lays on our hearts. Take before the king and he will transform them. He will raise that scepter as the king did for Esther, and the, the favor of God will fall on those for whom we pray. The Lord bless you. Picture yourself standing before the king of kings and lord of lords with that burden on your heart. He's going to raise that scepter. Hallelujah. <laughs> Of gold, 
Worship the King. Amen. Beautiful. She has a son in Iraq, right? Yes, I do. He's a and Chinook pilot. You uh, were at that wonderful large meeting where all of the at the army or navy and everyone was praying for the young people in Iraq, and I know that God has answered your prayers. Thank Amen. you so much, Susan. Amen. Good morning, Pastor Cal Shannon. How are Hello. you? You are well loved and known here in these islands <laughs> for the work of the Lord. Amen. And what does it mean, transformation of Hawaii? That That is part of your ministry or totally your ministry? Or? Uh, no, actually, um, there's uh, a number of us. Uh, uh, the core team is comprised of uh, Pastor Alan Cardenas, uh, from Hope Chapel, Nanakuli, um, and then uh, Pastor Francis Oda oh, of yeah. Group 70, um, the CEO of Group 70, and uh, and then myself. Uh, oh, and my wife as well, the yeah. four of us. And does Ed uh, have something to do with you too? Um, and then, yeah, we have uh, partnered with um, Ed Silvoso um, in what is called the International Transformation Network. Okay. Um, and uh, in fact, we just came back the other day from Hong Kong. I'm familiar um, with his works. He came into our church and did a blessing there. Yes. 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 Oh, he, yeah. he's got wonderful books. Yes. He wonderful really does. ideas in the marketplace. Right. Yeah. What really the the, the bottom line is he has taken um, and so have we. Um, the Great Commission. Look right in where, the camera. Where the Lord talks about um, uh, to go and disciple the nations, um, and I I've been thinking about this verse, you know, and I've been studying it, looking at it, and. Uh, it literally is uh, to disciple nations, disciple all the nations, actually. Now, in our translations, it says, make disciples of all the nations. And there's a huge difference when we think of make disciples of all the nations as opposed to a literal translation, which means disciple all the nations. Because one, when we think of make disciples of all the nations, yeah. we, we think in terms of individuals, right. that I need to go and make individual disciples. Now, that is true. However, the literal translation is disciple all the nations. Now, when you hear disciple nations, you no longer think of individuals. Right. You're thinking of large groups of people. Right. Now, inclusive of that are individuals, and that's why he says to go and baptize them 
in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe. That's the individual aspect. But we need to have both discipling individuals, the, the teaching and the baptizing, as well as thinking holistically, discipling nations. The Apostle Paul, um, he, he says, you know, I'm going to go to Spain because there's no more work for me to do. He's thinking nations. He's not thinking just individuals. And, and that's been a huge mindset change for us. Well, isn't there, uh, isn't it a fact that Benny Hinn goes to the different nations he to goes, bring he, Jesus he, exactly, Christ? Exactly, exactly. It's kind of the first step of discipling, bringing yes. him to the Lord. Then it's up to the people of the Lord there to disciple them and bring them in and get their foundation yes. set. Yes, yes. Yeah. And Bonke does the same thing. Yes, He does exactly. the same thing. We've got men and women over in Africa and China and all over. And you know, and the, the secret to each, it, it, uh, the Benny Hinn and, and, and Bonke and these men are wonderful. Uh, Todd Bentley, wonderful, wonderful men of God. They got used to open doors. But ultimately, the people that have the keys to their nations are usually the people in the nations, the believers in the nations themselves. That's the people that Jesus said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. And, and uh, these men and women come in and, and, and do a huge work. But really, ultimately, the people are going to stay there do the work there are the people of that nation and when they get and say hey we're the one we're the ministers it's not the outsider coming in it's right. us that God has made us the ministers and they catch it and we need to minister to at all levels of society whether it's in the business center or among the poor um, and then we begin to catch something new it's kind of like Billy Graham Dr. Billy Graham when he came over to do a ministry anywhere, he had people go forth first. Yes. And even Benny Hinn did that. They go forth first yes. and they figure out who the choir is going to be, what churches were involved, so yeah. that he could send the people back to the churches. Yes. If the kids got off the beaches they and got salvation, they needed to go right into yes. the churches, getting the fruit to remain. Well, you know, and I, and I agree with that 100%. The difference I see that's happening today is that so often in the past, what we would say is, Oh, man, we need to have Billy Graham here. We need to have Benny Hinn here. Not, hey, I can do it, too. That's right. I need to do it, too. That's you know, right. We just came back from, uh, from Hong Kong, and um, there's a, a, a woman there. She um, inherited four factories um, in China and in um, Guangzhou and in, in Hong Kong. And, uh, Talk right in there. <laughs> and, and as she became a believer and, and became uh, to understand she's there to disciple nations, she said, I have to do it in my practice. Well, what she discovered was that meant she had to uh, triple the wages of the people that were working the factories because uh, when she inherited these companies, that's what they had been paid. And she said, that's not a, that's not a fair wage. They can't make a living. That's right. And so she tripled the wages. <laughs> and then she said, you know, and in, in China, you work seven days a week yeah. in the factories. All she said, no, yeah. she said, no, this is cannot, this is not acceptable. One, yeah. one is, uh, they're not slaves, they're people. And so she has given them a day and a half off now. Now in America, we have two days off usually, yeah. you know. But that's a good start. Or, or a huge that's unheard start, of un unheard of. In China. Unheard, as I'm listening to her, I, I, and, and she just, you know, a young businesswoman who is seriously saying, I can help disciple the nation. And that, ha you know. that happened when Christ came into her heart. Then she had mercy. Exactly. She took, put all the old established regulated things that men and women have been doing for a thousand years. Oh, yeah. And said, this is the way Christ liberates the people. Yeah. See, Christ always liberated the women. Well, he exactly. liberated the people wherever he went. His love liberated people. It, it was like listening to... Um, uh, uh, an abolitionist in 1860, someone who said, "I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay, give pay uh, a salary to all of our slaves. If they want to be free, they can be set free." Yeah. Uh, and it was remarkable listening to this woman giving, restoring hope to these people, and and saying, and and then pr and then proclaiming, "This is the kingdom of God," yeah. you know, and and. Uh, and, and sharing the gospel and praying. She, she started praying for her workers. Her workers, she um, hired pastors and put them in the workplace. They began ministering to the other people. So many started coming to the Lord. She then said, okay, now we have to send them to the churches. And we're talking 
these factories are like thousands and thousands yeah, of people. Yeah. And so she got all the pastors in the community and she said, listen, we got all these people that are getting saved. Um, will you take them? <laughs> he said, but under one condition, you can't fight among each other. Oh, because <laughs> that's a big condition. <laughs> yes. She says, because <laughs> our people are coming to the Lord. They only know, you know one church, one Jesus. And, and the pastor said, of course, you know, we're talking thousands of people coming into the church. No more and fighting. No more fighting. No more denominational no. walls. Their walls are down. They exactly. don't work. They exactly. don't work. Only me, myself, and I and my group, we're all right, but yeah. you guys are all wrong. It doesn't work. Yeah, and see, what happens is when, pe and, and, and then it doesn't stop there. <laughs> then they said, then they said, well, we're going to, we commit ourselves that 51% of our income, of our net, a year, we're going to give for, towards the elimination of systemic poverty in our communities. See, that's where it began. 51%. That's I mean, what these people are yeah. doing, I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm listening. I'm like, okay, uh, you need to come and teach us. You know? <laughs> We're not, you and know. the men need to hear that, too. That's a little oh, woman. Her husband and her husband is doing exactly the same thing. He is a financial analyst, a very, very wealthy individual in Hong Kong, and he is doing exactly the same. The two of them are partnering together. Um, and. Uh, and he has committed himself that 51% of his net income is going to go towards elimination. I believe of God gives poverty. these prosperity and the money to people who will handle it right, be a good steward of God's money. Yeah. It's not given to us to just throw it away. Yeah. It's given to us for a purpose to do the will of God. Yes. And yes. then it's for us to find out what is the will of God and then give to it well, with it's all like, of money. It's like Zacchaeus. When Zacchaeus and when Jesus reached out to Zacchaeus and said, come down out of that tree, I want to go to your house. Zacchaeus going, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> he goes over to Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus says, he says, this is it. This is the real deal. This is what I've been searching for all my life. This is worth more than all the people I've cheated, all the money I've made. I'm going to give back four times to anybody I've cheated. And you know, I mean, he just gives away his money because he says, I found something greater. Now, that doesn't mean Zacchaeus became a poor man. No. Because I still believe the guy was Akamayan. He still was going to make money. You know, people with that kind of gift, they're going to make money. But he's now using it for the advancement of God's kingdom. kingdom. That's when I believe, when the Bible says this is good news to the poor. See, good news to the poor isn't, hey, listen, you're going to go to heaven. Yes, that is great news. But good news to the poor is you give them food to eat. And a house, <laughs> house like what our friend Ken is right. doing. That's the that's the gospel going forth. Feed the you hungry, know? clothe the those who have no clothes, yeah, and take care of the widows and the orphans, and do these things that you see at your hand. If you have a little, you give a, a little of what you've got. Yeah. If you've got a lot, give. Oh, you've got so much more to say, and I've yeah. got to go on to. Yes. Kid, yes. But yeah. I'll come back to you in just yeah, a minute. No problem. Okay. No problem. Good morning to you. Thank you. Tell me. <laughs> Thank you. We Ken should Anderson. stay. I'm, I'm inspired. You should keep going. <laughs> well, you are inspired. Maybe God will give you some money yes. to do what you have to we do too. And, and it's going to happen. God is prospering people in these islands now, and He's prospering the heart to give. Exactly. And we're going to give to the needs, and He's prospering the politicians. If we squandered upon ourselves. Um, with all the prosperity God is giving to us now, we will be held accountable, yeah, you know, um, and, and God is giving us this right. kind of wealth Which he so, has we can give, so we can give towards the poor. And know. Kent has been taking care of, uh, per year, 20, 15 to 20 families homeless. Tell me a little bit about your life that way, Kent. Okay. It, it moves so much with Calvin. What we do is we actually, I was loving everything that everybody was saying at the table and how you need everybody working together and we can all say how much we love God but there's a difference between actually doing it I mean I'm a Christian myself I represent an organization where we work with 33 congregations in the community wow. who actually have said you know what homelessness is a problem we have families with children who they don't have a place to stay they're hungry they go they, to school and they, they get a hot lunch go at to school but come home to no place without a shower necessarily without um, access to telephone or mailing addresses which makes it really hard to find a place to stay so what we found is we found currently 33 congregations who are willing to say you know what that's not good enough we can do better yeah. and what they have chosen to do is our congregations they say you know what we'll one week Every three months, 
so a week a quarter. We're gonna let families stay with us at our church and basically we'll provide them, we as Family Promise provide them the beds and the pillows, but we'll provide all the linens, all the sheets, and they're gonna provide the roof and dinner, breakfast and lunch. In the church or, or beside the church? Inside. Inside the church. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to use a church building day and night. We use it at There's night. There's too many empty churches around here that are not full of people that have needs. They put them in the warehouse instead. Come on. Well, what we found is most church buildings are empty at night. Yes. So basically we say, hey, can you let us use it from basically 5.30 at night to 7 in the morning? So the families actually stay at the churches, usually one of our partners, uh, St. John's Lutheran, they actually use their actual sanctuary, but most of them use like the church halls oh, or no. classroom buildings or these different areas, these facilities that are not being used at night. Or they're being used, but they're being used for community meetings or they're being underutilized. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we find that oftentimes those ministries that are occurring at night they become the volunteers in the program. They're used to coming to the church at night anyway. anyway. So 12 weeks a quarter, they're doing their normal ministry. And then that 13th week can become Family Promise Week where they're serving homeless families. And they're fed spiritually doing this. Very they're much fed so. physically and spiritually by serving. Very That's much so. What so beautiful. What we've learned is we believe the only way, and when I say we, Family Promise isn't just here in Hawaii. We've just started here in Hawaii this year but it's been existing since 1988. And actually it's in 39 states across the country and it's won awards from the White House. If you've heard of the Points of Light Foundation, we won a Points of Light Award as one of the top 20 nonprofits in the country back in 1992. So it's a model that works. But what we found is you're not really going to end the homeless problem if you're asking people to take care of it in a distant location. You need to bring the families to the congregations. And you need to help the members of the congregations create relationships because it's not really only about the food and the shelter. It's really about the relationships, the love, the compassion that is formed. And when the community says, you know what? This matters to us and this is not acceptable, then you have a chance to really turn the tide and unfortunately, as we all know right now, homelessness is growing quickly in Hawaii. Um, the official statistics say 6,000 across the state, but if you talk to the food providers on this island, they'll say it's probably closer to 15 to 20,000 on yeah, this right. island. That's really? Right. And um, there's also, if you look at governmental studies, they say that over 225,000 people in Hawaii are pretty much one paycheck away from homelessness. They're that's, one argument away from homelessness. They're sad. one injury. Because okay. many of our families, for example, they work construction, and let's face it, not every worker has health insurance. Not every worker has the benefits. Some get paid cash. If you're injured, you don't have that safety net. And people think of homeless as heartless people, that they don't know who they are or where they are. And many of these people have been in the marketplace. They've been doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. even they've gone, done three jobs. The wife has two jobs. The husband has two jobs. And this happens. They can't pay the rent, which is so high here in Hawaii, and then they're out. And they're not destitute people. They're people who are willing to work and to help build. I'd like to see people, the homeless, building their own homes. I'd like to see this happen someday. Actually, all of our families, we only take families with children. And all of the parents are working. So we've had a couple families who come into our program who aren't working yet, but within the first week or two, we help them secure a job. So we're not talking about families who just show up and are saying, give me. Yeah. They're doing everything they can to, create, to create a better life for their children. And what's amazing, our parents have been very hardworking and talented, but I think we forget that the fastest growing portion of homelessness is actually children. That's yeah. the quickest yeah. growing component. And the children who've been in our program have been extraordinarily talented. I remember this one 10-year-old um, boy we had who, because each week they go to a different congregation, well, most of our congregations actually have pianos. 
and there's this 10 year old boy who's going from church to church playing the piano no one ever taught him oh, he learned by ear oh, and what he plays is he usually plays movie themes because he watches movies <laughs> he's playing star wars i'm like i know that or he's playing uh the empire Star, or not that one but um and it's all indiana by jones and it's all by <laughs> ear <laughs> they're, they're just given a chance and it's amazing how talented he was we've had several artists <laughs> among our children um one of my favorite uh experiences so far well two first Something we forget about is we've accepted two four-day-old infants into our program. We have this growing problem where a family delivers, they don't necessarily have a home to go to. Where is that infant going to go? Oh and you don't want to split the family up. Right. So we've actually accepted two four-day-olds into our program. But Good for you. But uh, when we're talking about talent, we're not doing, I mean, I think we do a lot, but we're not creating all these special programs, mm -hmm. but that stability and that compassion and that love really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. We have this eight-year-old, who was actually the brother of the 10-year-old, <laughs> who, uh, the piano player. He, when he came to our program, he was a special needs student, and he really struggled in school. They were with us about three to four months, and in that time, the end of the school year came, he had to take his test scores. He had to take his tests at the end of the year again, they just told him that his scores were too high. He has to change schools now. He has to go to a regular school. And all these years, he was a special needs student, but the reality was he just needed some support and some stability and a hot shower and a bed that's his own to sleep in every day. I mean, living homeless, I mean, I, there's certain things I've learned I didn't think about. I knew it could be uncomfortable sleeping in a car, sleeping on the beach. But he would cough all night because the mildew in the car. Oh my Being God. out of that environment where it's not as mildew ridden and yeah. the mildew on all the clothes, heck, when the families first join us, they probably do two days of laundry when they first come in because they're trying to catch up for everything with all the kids. I don't think I have the knowledge of all the suffering that is going on in these islands. If we did, we would be a lot different. I believe that. I think if we hear more stories like what you're saying, our hearts would be, you know, our hearts. We would see what we could do. Well, our hearts would be touched and we'd say, all right, what is it that I have that I can give to help this? And I know that we've been talking, uh, dear Constantine, Nightingale and myself, we've been talking about a Hawaiian Dream Center. Mm -hmm. And in that Dream Center, most of these things are addressed to have a place for 500 abused women, 500 abused children, 500 whatever. And you've heard us talk about it. We don't know how it's going to happen, but we know that there's a need. There is. And it, we've been praying, and all the intercessors have been praying, and all the pastors, and Danny, and the different ones, and Vargas, and Virginia, for God to do something for our islands. In order to become the first Christian state, we have to show them a state that has solved their problems through Christ, not just through the government, but through Christ and the government working together, that God will do this. It will be a miracle. It has to be. And then all the other states can see what we have done and know that it is truly by turning ourselves to the Lord and having a heart. It's all about having a heart for the widow, you know, I heard about children, they go to school, they have a hot bowl of soup, that's their one meal a day, and they come home, there's no home. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what that would be like me as raising five children, you know, I, they come home and I was there. I was blessed. I was one of those women that could stay home. And they had a mama there, and they had hot soup, and they had a home. You know, you, you, you've got to have an example for a child to follow and he comes back into that atmosphere, what better place than the church? I think that is wonderful. Hey, you churches, are you listening out there? And am I listening in here? What can we do to help maybe one person or one family? What would you say? What, what can we, ordinary ministers and people, do? Well, there's many things that can be done. Um, the first thing I can say is to actually start doing something so often that first step for somebody. is the hardest one. So for example, if you're part of a church, get your church to get involved. 
A, you can, it's amazing what a group can do. I mean, we have 33 partners right now. We're looking to add as many who want to welcome and join us. Um, so they can join Family Promise, for example. Yeah, what's their number? Well, Come we on. have a website, which is okay. www.familypromisehawaii.org. Uh, that's the email on the telephone screen there, or tele television screen, sorry. And our phone number is 261-7478, 261-7478. And we're looking for congregations, but also individuals. They can volunteer individually. I mean, obviously, any nonprofit, there's always the need for food. There's always the need for resources for our families. But in all sincerity, as a nonprofit, there's always the need for cash donations because it costs money to help. Yeah. And um, we're fortunate. Our families are they're better fed than I am. I'll be the first one to admit to that. You know that when a child goes and feeds and helps to feed people, they see what little other people have. They have no shoes, and they have the scroungy. They don't have that label on kind of clothes that you see all the children buying for in school. And they need to see a home where there's just a piece of, of bread and some mayonnaise spread on the bread for dinner. They need to see that, how blessed they are. And our children need to be giving money. And part of what they would spend on frivolous things of the world, the fashion of the world, and say, here, here's my heart. I want to give something. They need to be taught how to tithe and how to give and an offering of what they, I want, 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 want. This is the way we're raised. And we, mothers and fathers, we want to give, 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 give. We're giving to the wrong thing. We're giving in to their carnal natures and not the spiritual nature. They need to be taught to tithe, to give offerings, to give of themselves, to go down there and feed people and see what it looks like to live in a hovel and a place and see what it looks like to live in nothing. And what we think is just as important is, and the reason why we bring the families to our congregations, to our churches, is they also need to see that that homeless child or parent across from them, oftentimes you would never know because some many of the families who are on the beaches, you can tell and you can see, but so often you might be going to school with another homeless child who you would you never know. Tell. And there's, I have a great example, um, there's Alyssa, a nine-year-old uh, girl who I go to church with. We actually went out to feed at a uh, soup kitchen. This is before I was even, right when I was starting with Family Promise. And we were helping actually at uh, Kwai Hao when, uh, when they shut down Ala Moana Park. Yeah. She was scared before she got there because she had never really met a homeless person. She didn't know what to expect. By the time, she didn't want to go. She's like, I, I want to stay in the car. I was like, no, come on, let's go. By the time that night ended, I was shocked. When she came to me after, she's like, everybody was so nice. Yeah. And everybody was so yeah. kind. Yes. And yeah. she had this picture that wasn't based on a personal experience. Right. She had this picture based on fear. She had this right. picture right. based on this right. image that's portrayed either by the television, by the right. radio, by our community. And we need to overcome that image and that picture image. and see each other as what we are, which is all equal. Yeah. We're all equal. And I am so glad. I wish there Thank are a hundred million other young men like you mm. and young women like you that are giving of yourself and your mm. heart. And I yes. thank God for you, yes. Pastor oh. Cal. You're I'm doing a great you. work here in the islands. I hear about the good things all the time oh. in the marketplace you. and out of the marketplace. And thank you so much. I know we only have three minutes. Could you say one sentence to the camera? One sentence, one sentence. What's on your heart? Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, loves you. Do not allow the enemy to torment it anymore. Come unto him, confess your sin, and turn back to Jesus. Amen. And what would you have to say next? One sentence. Well, I just want to say God bless you and uh, live aloha today. Oh, okay. What I would say is you can change lives. You can change other people's lives, and in turn, that changes your life. But it doesn't happen by sitting there. You actually have to take that first step and take action. And I would say take action today. So you're saying, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask and you shall receive. If you really have a heart to do something for the Lord, and the Lord is calling you, everybody has a call, go and do it. Find out what you love to do in God, and then go and do it with all of your heart, your mind, your strength, everything that's within you. And you know whether it's visiting people in prison, or feeding the homeless, or, or just 
being with some in the nursing homes. Give of yourself and God will bless you for it. You'll have eternal peace and an eternal heaven. Yes, Jesus is Lord of these islands. And God is going to give us a gorgeous revival. And he's going to take care of the sick and the homeless and the hurting because he is God. And God dwells within us. So we're going to do the best we can, yeah, for all those. Hear the voice of the Lord and be obedient to him. He loves that. And have faith that pleases him. And go forth now. Have a wonderful, lovely day in the Lord. We thank you for coming and listening. And Susan, what was your last word to say? Once, quick. Bye-bye. Wave bye-bye. Oh, yeah. We got a...